Okay, so the next talk is on int QCCA security in the random Oracle model and its applications. It's a paper by Lois uh, Huguenin Dumitin and Serge Vaudenay, and Lois is going to present the paper. Thank you very much for the introduction. So I'll start straight away by defining the, the core primitive of this talk, namely in QCCA chem. So first, a brief reminder of what a chem is. It's a tuple of three algorithms, gen and caps and decaps, where gen outputs a pair of, of a public key secret key, and caps take the public key and outputs a key in a ciphertext, and decaps take the secret key in a ciphertext and output the key. So now we want to define in QCCA security, so we use a distinguishing game where the adversary receives a challenge ciphertext and a key, which is either random and sample at random, and uh, like a real key that is encapsulated into the challenge ciphertext. And the goal for the adversary is to distinguish the real key from the random key. And as in, uh, in CCA security, the adversary has access to a decapsulation oracle that returns the decapsulation for any ciphertext except uh, the challenge one. And the only difference with the classical or like normal in CC security is that the adversary is limited to Q queries where Q uh, is constant and is the Q in the name of the definition. So we can have in one CCA, in two CCA, and so on. Uh, now, this notion was first defined by Kramer et al. in 2007. And in that work, they showed that it's possible to build a CPA to QCCA transform in the standard model. But this transform is quite inefficient. And apart from this work and a few others, uh, this notion hasn't been very popular, or at least in practice. Um, maybe because it's uh, between in CPA and in CC security, or maybe because before we could use a uh, Diffie Hellman, which is uh, secure against uh, active adversaries, even uh, under uh, reasonable assumptions. But now the, the crypto game has changed a bit because we want post quantum and forward secrecy. So we want camps instead of Diffie-Hellman for a post-quantum, and we want ephemeral keys instead of static keys for forward secrecy. So maybe in some cases, NCC security is not really needed. And actually, in several new uh, post-quantum variants of existing protocol, we can use in one CC camps. So for instance, in a PQ TLS 1.3, where we um, replace Diffie-Hellman with a, with a chem, we can use an in one CC chem. And also in this nice variant of uh, TLS, which is called chem TLS, uh, we can use an uh, in-1CC chem for the ephemeral uh, chem. So there are two chems in that construction. One is uh, for static keys and the other for ephemeral. And for the ephemeral one, we can use the in-1CC uh, chem. And also there are some uh, post-quantum variants of uh, X3DH where we can also use uh, in-1CC chems such as the one by uh, Brenda Little. So we see that in these new protocols, in CPA might not be enough, but in CC is not really necessary for the ephemeral game. So maybe we can use in, in uh, one CC security. And so we wondered whether we could build more efficient in one CC camps than in CC once built with the Fujizaki Okamoto transform. And as you probably know, like in the FO transform, there is this costly re-encryption check uh, when you decapsulate. So maybe we can do better. And so our contribution, we give two very simple and efficient transforms that take a one-way secure public key encryption scheme and output it in QCC chem. And we prove that the first one is secure in the QRAM and the second one in the random oracle model only. And compared to the Fujizaki Okamoto-like transforms, uh, there is no de-randomization, which means no re-encryption in decapsulation. And that means that decapsulation is much faster than with the uh, FO-derived chems. And also using a similar proof technique that we use for the, to prove the security of the second transform, we show that uh, post-quantum TLS 1.3 uh, is secure in the random Oracle model if the chem is only a CPA secure, which solves um, an open question that was raised in a, in a few works. But then it's only like a, a theoretical solution because the bound that we get is a very much non-tight. Mm -hmm. And as a corollary, it means also that uh, classical TS 1.3 is secure if the computational Diffie-Hellman assumption holds, and we don't need like uh, fancier assumptions such as uh, PRF or DH if you know it, or like uh, strong Diffie-Hellman. So let's see how we can build these uh, transforms. First, we can uh, wonder whether the trivial PKE to chem transform work. So by uh, trivial PKE uh, to chem transform, I mean the one where uh, the, the gen is going to be the the gen function of the underlying PKE. When we want to encapsulate, we just uh, sample a random uh, seed or random message. We encrypt this seed, 
And the key is going to be the hash or like the key, der the key derivation function or the random oracle applied on the seed. And when we want to decapsulate, we simply uh, decrypt the ciphertext to get the seed and um, we hash it. So we can wonder whether uh, this transform outputs uh, in QCC chem if the PKE is only uh, one way secure. And the answer is no, because if you take most of the post-quantum schemes um, and you modify the challenge ciphertext by adding very small noise, you're going to decrypt back to the challenge message. So in uh, like the one in one CCA game or like in QCC game, if you call the decapsula decapsulation oracle with the challenge ciphertext plus some very small noise, you're gonna get back the real key and you can distinguish with very good probability. So a quick fix is to add a confirmation hash to the ciphertext where we add this uh, this tag, which is a random oracle applied on the seed and the ciphertext. And when we decapsulate, we simply verify uh, that the tag is consistent with the seed that we decrypted. And now the previous attack is thwarted because the adversary we need to know the tag for the modified ciphertext and the challenge seed. And unless it can query the challenge seed to the random oracle, uh, he, he cannot like get it. And more generally, the proof ID is, uh, is uh, as follow. We can first note that this transform is very similar to the React transform by Okamoto and Poncheval from uh, 20 years ago, uh, where they were building a transform that was doing one-way PCA to in CCA um, PKE. In our case, we want to get uh, in QCCA chem, but the idea of the proof is the same, where uh, one-way PCA is one-wayness against uh, plain text checking attacks. It's not very important, uh, so important what it is. But basically, the adversary receives a shiny cipher text that it must invert, and it has access to um, an oracle that returns whether the decryption of ciphertext is equal to some plain text. So yeah, what the, the oracle does is not so important, but you can note that on every query, the oracle returns one bit of information. So in the second step of the proof, you can just argue that one-way PC with Q queries is the same as uh, just one-wayness with a loss of Q security bits, because we can just like make a reduction where we guess the Q bits that are returned by the oracle. And that's the bound that we get. Uh, so we have a two to the power Q factor, which looks bad. But since Q is constant, it's not really a problem uh, in theory, at least. But now in practice, it's, uh, it's going to be only suitable for small Q. Uh, like for in one CC chem, we're going to get uh, just a two factor in the, in the bound. And then we build the second transform, where the idea is to get rid of the tag. And so now we hash the seed and the ciphertext directly in the key. So that's very similar like to the, to the trivial transform, except that uh, we hash the ciphertext in the, in the key as well. And again, the previous, the previous attack doesn't work because if you uh, decapsulate the modified ciphertext, you're not gonna get back the real key in the, in, in the QCC game. And we can also build the chem variant of this transform, so like chem to chem instead of PKE to PKE. Uh, and this transform is even like simpler. We just call the underlying uh, and caps of the underlying chem to get the ciphertext and the seed. And uh, like the key is gonna be this uh, hash of the key material or the seed and the ciphertext. And what's nice about this uh, transform is that it preserves the symmetric structure of the underlying chem if it exists. Uh, so by symmetric structure, I mean like in Diffie-Hellman or like in SIDH, where the ciphertext does not depend on the public key or like Alice's share does not depend on Bob's share. And so the chem that is output by this transform will preserve this uh, symmetric structure, uh, which is nice because in uh, like the first transform, it's not the case. And in the Fujisaki Okamoto transform, it's not the case either. And again, we get uh, this type of security bound where uh, QH is the number of queries uh, you can do to the random oracle. And uh, you can look in the paper if you are interested in the details of the proof, but basically it requires quite a lot of random oracle programming and careful guessing in the reduction because we want the factor to be exponential in Q, which is constant, and not in QH, which uh, grows with the security parameter or can grow with the security parameter. Okay, so I'll talk about uh, post-quantum CS 1.3 and whether CPA security is sufficient for it. Now, this is a very high level overview of the CS 1.3 handshake, whether the client and the server to the, do a, a CNAC. Uh, then they do uh, Diffie-Hellman key exchange, 
uh, the server can compute uh, the key and then send um, its uh, own share to the client uh, with an, uh, an encrypted certificate signature and a Mac over the transcript. Then the client can send um, the client finished message, which is also a Mac on the, its own transcript. And finally, they can exchange some uh, encrypted data. Now to, to make this post quantum, we can simply write Diffie-Hellman as a chem. So now the client simply calls KeyGen to get a secret key public key, sends the public key to the server, and the server encapsulates against the public key to get the ciphertext and the key. It sends a ciphertext and the client can compute uh, the key. And obviously, if we want uh, post-quantum authentication, uh, we need also uh, PQ signatures. And now if we look at the original proof of TS 1.3 security by uh, Dowling et al., uh, it's quite trivial to see that we can just uh, use a in one CC cam instead of uh, Diffie-Hellman. Like, there are a few details in the proof, but basically it just uh, goes through. And so what we want to show now is that we can even use uh, in CPA or like one-way CPA uh, cam uh, in the random oracle model and the uh, uh, PQ TLS 1.3 handshake will still be secure. Now just a, a few, few words on the security model. We use the same security model as uh, in the regional proof, uh, which is called multi-stage security. Uh, in this model, the adversary can send, receive, and uh, expose using some oracles. And when a key is derived and ready for use, we say it is accepted. And on acceptance of a key, the protocol pauses, gives back the, the hand to the adversary that can then call some oracles before continuing uh, the handshake or the protocol. Now, this is uh, what we get if we write relevant part of the TLS 1.3 handshake uh, in this model. Uh, first, we assume that everything is random oracle. Uh, so we know from uh, like uh, this Tuesday's talk that we have to be a bit careful about that. Uh, but basically, yeah, so the client and the server, they exchange the public key ciphertext, then the client derive uh, some, uh, some key, and then uh, they apply some complicated key schedule to get some other keys. And since we want to prove that uh, one-way CP is enough, at some point, we're going to have to make a one-way CP reduction where we have an adversary that doesn't have access to any oracle, and this adversary needs to correctly simulate the view of the underlying multi-stage adversary. And for some reasons in the proof, we will need to simulate the client uh, behavior upon receiving one ciphertext for which we don't know uh, the secret key. And in particular, we will need to simulate the computation of these two trans transaction keys, uh, TKEC and TKS, that themselves depend on some other values. Well, basically, the idea is that these, uh, these keys will depend on some hash of the key material and some hash of the transcript that contains the ciphertext. So overall, except that there are some nested random oracles, uh, this is very similar to what we had in the second transform, where the key was just the hash of the, of the seed or the key and the ciphertext. And so using a similar proof techniques, that is a bit more complicated because now we have nested random oracles, but we can correctly simulate uh, one decapsulation query. And the last remaining problem is the proof is this value DHS that does not depend on the ciphertext. So we cannot use the same uh, proof technique. But then we can uh, notice that uh, DHS is used only after the MAC verification uh, at the bottom here. And so in the proof, we can argue that either the underlying adversary queried the key to the random oracle and knows the key for the MAC, or like the MAC is going to fail and uh, the client is going to abort. So in the reduction, we can either abort or recover the, the key. And that's how the, the proof goes through. Again, if you're interested in the details, uh, I would encourage you to, to read the paper. And so that's the, the bound that we get. So in theory, it shows that when we CPA camps are sufficient for TS 1.3 to be secure, then you can see that uh, the bound is very much non tight because we have like a number of queries to the random records, like nearly to the sixth in the, in the bound. So the, the result is theoretical, but still that solves uh, an open question. And as I said before, as a corollary, it means that uh, CDH assumption is sufficient for TS 1.3 to be secure if the other uh, primitives are secure as well, obviously. Uh, so I'll just conclude by talking a bit about the impact and uh, open questions. So we saw that in one C camps can be used in several post-quantum protocols, such as PQTS 1.3 or CAMTLS and so on. 
And uh, compared to current solutions based on NCC camp derived with the Fujiaki Okamoto transform, it halved the decapsulation time at least. So here are some very quick benchmarking results for some of the, the PQ schemes. On the left, you have the decapsulation time for uh, the original decapsulation function. And on the right, the decaps with no re-encryption, uh, which is very close to what we, what we would get with our uh, transform. And you can see that the speed up is uh, very good. It's uh, always more than two, it's even six for, uh, for Frodo. Um, and it's also interesting for Sai because we uh, go from uh, more than two milliseconds to decaps to uh, roughly one millisecond. And also the, the CAMs derived with our uh, transforms can preserve the symmetry of the underlying CPA secure scheme, which can be interesting for uh, SIDH, for instance. Uh, also, it's a very generic and dropping replacement because we're just going to swap CAMs with CAMs. And the CAMs are quite easy to implement because it's actually like the transforms are, act are actually simplification of the Fujizaki Okamoto transform. And maybe the, the main obvious downside is that in QCC, CAM can be vulnerable to misuse or reuse attack. So that means that if you implement your FML uh, key uh, CAM, and you reuse the ephemeral key multiple times, then maybe after a few thousand of uh, reuses, an adversary can recover the secret key, as was shown in, uh, in uh, many other works. So we have to be very careful when implementing protocols that ephemeral keys are really used only once. And I guess as future work, it would be nice to prove the QM security of the second transform and of the TLS result. The challenge is that uh, there is a lot of random oracle programming in the classical proof, so that might not be so easy to transpose to the to the QM setting. And for the TLS result, there is a lot of uh, nested random oracles as well, so that can be tricky. Uh, my best guess is that it would hold, but uh, maybe the security bound would be would be worse. Uh, and also to get a better bound for this uh, TLS, TLS result that we had, uh, because uh, yeah, it's uh, very much non tight at the moment. Um, thank you very much. Questions for the speaker? Thanks a lot for the nice talk. Um, so uh, you talked about these losses, basically this loss which has a power equal to the number of decap queries for the second transform. Right? Uh, so which one? Uh, which... For the second transform, you had a power like yes. a, a number of random oracle queries to the power Q, which is the number of uh, CCA queries. Yes. Um, do you have any idea whether this is an artifact or is it is it known uh, in the classical setting whether this is an artifact of the proof or are there attacks that exploit this, this looseness? So I think like in uh, F4 like transform proofs, you always have at least a factor Q, QH or like QH plus something. Um, because we use one wayness of the CPA. Um, and at some point when we in the reduction, we will need to make a guess of which queries to the random oracle was the correct one. And overall, we get a correct prob probability with one over QH or QH plus one something. So we will have always this, uh, I guess, at least one of the QH plus one factor uh, here. Um, I'm not sure about the second one, if we really need like a square, this is an artifact of the proof or not, but at least one uh, factor QH, yes, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks. Other questions? Um, hi, thanks for a nice talk. So sort of a follow-up question, but if you let uh, the PKE security notion on the right remain one way PCA, does the bound get tighter? So if it's a one-way PCA, yes, you don't get the uh, Q, the, the exponential Q factor actually. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again and continue with the next talk. <laughs>